Is teleportation real? The scientists found a way to make teleportation work. Are you tired of rushing to your job in the morning? Do you want to get to work without dealing with angry drivers or smelly bums? Did you ever wish you could disappear from one place and show up in one of your favorite places? Yes, the scientists are searching for a solution, and it could be as easy as reviewing the body to a microscopic scale, destroying all your favorite bits at point A, and sending all the scanned data to point B, where a device constructs you right back from nothing at a fraction of a second. Even though it's like putting your child in a subatomic wood shredder every day, think of how much time you'll save every day. It's named teleportation, and you've probably seen it in movies like Star Trek and The Fly. If it was accessible to individuals, this innovation would indeed make it capable of traveling lengthy journeys without actually going there. The world will be connected instantly, and going to another planet will be as easy as taking one baby step. Is it difficult to believe? Take a moment to think that teleportation hasn't been just a science fiction thing since 1993. That same year, the idea went from being a crazy and possible dream to a possible theory. Charles Bennett, a physicist and a group of IBM researchers, proved that quantum teleportation is possible. However, only if the item being teleported is devastated first. What for? Scanning changes the original so much that the duplicate now represents only the original that exists. Bennett first told people about this discovery at an annual meeting of the American Physical Society in March of 1993. Since then, experiments with photons have shown that it is conceivable to teleport information using quantum mechanics. The scientists are still working on it persistently, putting together parts of telecommunications, transportation, and quantum physics in amazing ways. Latest experiments in science fiction, when people try to teleport things, they end up with gene-spliced monsters and madmen who have lost their bodies. In truth, the experimental studies haven't been too bad so far, and they look great actually. In 1998, physicists from California Institute of Technology and two European groups effectively teleported a photon, which is a particle of energy that carries light. This proved IBM's theory that teleportation was possible. The Caltech squad read the atomic structure of a photon and sent this data through a 3.28 feet of coax cable and made a copy of the photon on the opposite side. As expected, the original photon stopped being there once the copy showed up. The Caltech team had to get around in a thing called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle to do the study. This principle says that you can't know where a particle is and how fast it is moving simultaneously. It is also the primary reason why things bigger than a photon can't be teleported. However, can you use quantum teleportation if you can't figure out where a particle is? Galtech physicists use entanglement to move a photon without going against the Heisenberg principle. To do quantum teleportation with entrapment, you need to have at least three photons. Let's assume photon A is the one that will move, photon B will move things, and photon C will mix up the photon B. If scientists looked at photon A too tightly without entrapment, they would knock it and alter it. Scientists can learn some things about photon A by tying together photons B and C. The rest of the data will be passed from photon A to photon B and then to photon C. When scientists put the data from photon A into photon C, they made a copy of photon A that is exactly the same. But photon A doesn't exist the same way it did before the message was transmitted by photon C. When Captain Kirk beams off to an alien planet, an evaluation of his atomic structure goes through the teleportation room into a place he wants to go. There, a copy of Kirk is built. In the meantime, the original disappears. Until 1998, researchers have not yet reached the point where they could teleport baboons. This is because it's tough to teleport living things. Still, they have made a lot of progress. In 2002, scientists at the Australian National University skillfully teleported a laser beam. In 2006, a group of Denmark's Niels Bohr Institute teleported information from a laser beam to a fog of atoms approximately 1.6 feet away. Team leader Dr. Eugene Polzik said, It is one step further because for the first time it involves teleportation between light and matter, two different objects. One is the carrier of information and the other one is a storage medium. In 2012, scientists at China's University of Science and Technology set a mark for teleportation. They sent a photon 
50.3 miles beyond the old record, which was 60.3 miles. Only two years later, European scientists were able to transmit quantum data through a regular telecommunications optical fiber. With all these improvements, it's clear that quantum teleportation will affect quantum computing long before it speeds up your morning commute. These experimental studies are crucial for creating channels that really can send quantum data much more quickly than the fastest computer systems we have today. All that matters is getting data from A to B. But will people ever be able to take that trip through time and space? Teleporting people, Jeff Goldblum's character in The Fly, Seth Brundle, shows us how complicated teleportation can be. The transporters from Star Trek and the telepods from The Fly not only represent something that could happen in the distant future, but may also be physically impossible. Einstein's theory of special relativity says that it is a big no for a person's data to move at light speed. This is because a device that lets an individual move instantly from some other place might need that person's information to move at light speed. Furthermore, for an individual to teleport, the teleporter's computer would need to find and evaluate every 1,028 atoms that constitute a human body. That is really more than one quintillion atoms. The data then had to be sent to some other place, in which a never incredible device would put the person's body back together with great accuracy. How much space would be left for a mistake? Don't worry about stringing your DNA with a cat or a fruit fly because if your molecules reformed even a millimeter out of location, you'd show up at your desired location with significant harm to your nervous system or body. There would also be a lot of disagreement about what it means to arrive. The person who was transported wouldn't really show up anywhere. The entire thing would operate like a fax machine. At the other end, a copy of the individual would appear, then what would actually occur to be original. So, what would you do with your original versions after every time you send a fax? So, it makes sense that every productive biodigital transportation would involve a mix of killing and creating something new. Every time you use it, every element of your body would be digitized, and a biological clone would be made containing all of your memories, feelings, and dreams. The early version would be required to die. Whether we're okay with copying ourselves each time we're required to go across the state and killing tiny John each time he visits the school. As with all technology solutions, researchers will undoubtedly keep improving the ideas that make teleportation work. How will it work to teleport? Teleportation is among those Frankenstein techniques that scare us and make us excited at the same time. Certainly, going from Manhattan to Hong Kong or from Earth to Neptune in a moment is a force that should be grabbed. This could ensure the survival of the human species in the long run, and the technologies around it could alter what it means to be human. Then again, why worry with such a perfect replica if a device can create digital everything which makes you and reconstruct it on a different side of the world? What about a better copy that is pretty, young, wiser, powerful, and satisfied? Why be concerned about becoming old when you can just go through your teleporter and come out young again? Biodigital transportation is both tempting and scary. So many of our sci-fi ideas are filled with disaster and tragedy making people feel like they don't belong. Since if we ever accomplish it, we'll grasp life, death, matter, space, and time. Indeed, something should hold between people and divine status like that, correct? Thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and subscribe to our channel for more awesome videos like this.